Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel and today we're going to talk about what's on the news. Mainly Christian news and then we're going to talk about what's going on in the financial market, okay? Just one article because I feel like we all need to hear this. Let's start with CBN. So as we can see, it says California official orders police and fire chaplains to stop praying in Jesus' name. I thought this was pretty important to show you because this stuff is literally still happening in today's world, right? It says that, now when I read, I don't want to read like line by line by line by line. I'm going to like sometimes skip around, but I will always leave a link in the description so you can, you know, read it yourself. But it's just for the sake of time, okay? A California police chaplain and a fire chaplain are demanding that the local city council revoke a recent order that forbids them from concluding prayers at events in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a believer like me, you would know that this is just what we say at the end of a prayer. And it's like saying, uh, let God's will be done, right? And so be it, okay? So... You know, a nonprofit legal group that aims to defend religious regions sent a letter to the Carlsbad City Council requesting that they overturn their recent order by the city manager to keep police chaplain J.C. Cooper and fire chaplain Denny Cooper from praying in the name of Jesus. And it goes into, like, the story about them and what they do. And in early March... You can follow over here. He was asked to give an invocation at the Carlsbad Police Department award ceremony, and he concluded the name in Jesus' name. Now, I mean, I don't really know what they expected, but you put Chaplin up there. I mean, what are you going to say? I guess they wanted him to say in the earth's name, right? About a month later, he was told by the city council, so they stayed on that. Like, they didn't, like, move on and like okay whatever stayed on that a month later they came back to him and said that you're gonna be removed okay so that unless he removes in jesus name from his future prayers he will be subject to discipline um his father denny was told by fire chief Mike, around the same time that the city manager told him that he could no longer perform implications unless he removed the name Jesus. So both of them are told the same thing. And like I said, they waited a whole month. Like, nothing else was on their mind but that prayer. It just really irked them. And remember, the Bible says that we battle not against fresh and blood, but principalities and powers in high places. So when you go and do something for the Lord, you know, you have to pray beforehand, ironically, but yeah, you do have to pray beforehand. You have to pray over yourself. And also, you don't have to accept every invitation to do something, right? Um, he sought counsel with his father and pastor and told the police that removing the name of Jesus from his prayers would also be denying Jesus as his savior, and that's a sin. As a result, he declined to give any future invocations. I wonder what you guys think about this. It says, because the chaplains cannot in good conscience erase the name of Jesus from their prayers, this order derives first responders of the souls and the spiritual strength that the chaplain's volunteer ministry has provided in nearly two decades. So remember, just now it's an issue. It's very interesting. Um, therefore, we urge the city council to return this long-standing practice of inviting chaplains to pray freely in accordance with this here religious beliefs okay if you have a problem with prayers i don't know why you're inviting them so um they're gonna like try to like come up with a new policy for them basically but i want to know what you think guys think down in the comments let me know um would you quit you know would you fight this or do you just feel like another day this is just another day of the job, right? Okay. Let's move on to the next article. That was thanks to CBN, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, 
I'm going to go to this one first. This is from Christian Post, and it says, Church finance manager pleads guilty of stealing $775,000 through a complex scheme. Now, <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, this is really crazy. The fact that they were that bold to steal that much. But let's read the story. A former employee of a Florida church has reportedly pleaded guilty of stealing $775, not dollars, thousand dollars from his parish operating account over five months. So they did this for a period of five months, guys. And it's just like, you know, it's just like, it's not, but it's just like, you know, wow. They, they didn't stop after month one. They didn't feel guilty at the month two. They just kept going to see how much they can get, I guess. It says that Heather, is a woman, defrauded Christ the King Catholic Church in Tampa while employed there. Her duties reportedly included generating printed bank checks payable to the parish's vendors and getting signatures from parish officials. According to the filing, she would then destroy the authorized print bank checks Okay, so and prepare new handwritten bank checks in the same accounts as the legitimate ones, but made payable to her personal accounts and creditors. So she would get them signed and everything like that, and then like rip it up. <laughs> Dang. So, first of all, not everybody that works in the church is a Christian. That's number one. And then, second of all, not everybody that Not everyone has good intentions just because they were in a church, okay? A lot of people do it just to look good. So we're going to go down. It says, she would create fraudulent data and enter into the church's records. Sounds like she was like a bookkeeper or something like that. To make it appear that she had mailed the printed bank checks. <sighs> An audit of the church's accounting software and bank accounts showed a loss amount of seven hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred ninety-six dollars and ninety cents. She couldn't even let them have the ninety cents, guys. In funds stolen by her using the fraudulent scheme from October twenty twenty-three to March twenty twenty-four. This is really recent, okay? Wow. A review of her financial institution number two bank account statements and other financial records revealed. Expensive purchases of concert and show tickets, luxury goods, payments to her mortgage, and other purchases for herself and others. You know, this, her being found out is God bringing just the situation. That's all I got to say. Um, before the church discovered the stolen funds, she initially confessed to having stolen a smaller sum of money from the church. So, what I think, I gotta get away from this. Uh, what I think is that she begins to feel guilty. So she's like, oh, well, I stole $750. <laughs> I don't wanna add three zeros, but at least, you know, I told them somewhat close. It's not nothing close, okay? And she reportedly begged the church to not contact the authority and press charges. I mean, so what are they supposed to do? Oh, okay. You stole nearly um, a million dollars from us, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll pretend it never happened, okay? Just go back to work. No, it, it, it didn't work like that. They called the authorities. The plea deal carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and a maximum of a $250,000 fine and a term of supervised release of not more than three years. I honestly don't think that. Oh, I know I'm tired, but I honestly don't think that she will have it easy getting an accounting job after this. What do you guys think? Really, really unfortunate. Um, but honestly, be honest. And if you're struggling, ask God. To provide and then ask those around you they think could help you but stealing is never the way okay we already know that but apparently you know 
So I'm going to tell you this one and then I'm going to end with this last one from Christianity Today. I'm going to mix it up, mix the finance one in there. Let me quickly get away from that screen because I don't want any, I don't want any issues. What is this? I don't want any like copyright issues, so I'm not like trying to play that. But basically, okay, so this is what happened. Let me go up because I want y'all to see that. So this lady gets EBT, right? And what happens is people have been stealing. <sighs> people have been stealing money from people's EBT cards. And she has four kids and she gets a whopping, I think it was $939 in food stamps. Okay, And somebody stole that money. So she was grocery shopping at Aldi. And she had a cart full of canned food and vegetables. Guess what happened? When she went to pay for it, nothing was on her heart. I mean, do you know how like upset I would be? Like, is this a joke? I know I have nearly a thousand dollars on that card. I didn't spend anything yet. Hmm. So, anyways. She paid what for what she could out of pocket, but fell far short for what her family needed. I cried every day because my five year old has autism, my seventeen year old has ADHD and ODD, and they have food sensitivity. She's somebody that really needs specific types of groceries. Unfortunately, her experience is uncommon. The article says is part of a growing trend of identity theft targeting the forty two million lower income Americans who rely on EBT cards. You're stealing money from these people. My heavens, this is a devastating for folks who are on edge already. Now, I think that if it was stolen from them, that ABT or HRA could pay it back to them. That's what I'm I'm thinking. But hopefully, you know, because it, like, it even made the news, like, you can get the money back, right? Okay. So anyway... And it just goes into ways to like safeguard against this stuff. ABT cards depend on an old school magnetic stripe for security. The stripe contains all information to clone the card, data that can be picked up by an illegal card reader over a legitimate one at a store ATM when a card is swiped. So basically, they need to fix this, you know. That's how the back of EBT card looks, by the way. But 36% of EBT theft victims never file for replacement benefits because half of them don't know about the program at all. And 19% were denied reimbursement, including her. They said they don't do reimbursement reimbursements. I don't know. Um, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of this because this is terrible. They did her dirty. They did her dirty. You lost that much money. They can't give it back to you. You didn't spend it. It's clear it was a theft. It made the news. Help her. Yeah. All right, that's all I'm going to do for this recording. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed, it's best you hide, okay? Like, you need to subscribe. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you next time.